Hey, what's going on, people? Tech Jamo. Obviously, we are here in the Honda E, and I just wanted to go through with you guys and let you know what's really good for the infotainment system because I don't really think there is a video on YouTube that just goes through Wagwan with all of these displays. So I'm going to try my best to just kind of narrow it down and let you know what's really good and what kind of functions and settings that you can access from there. If I do leave anything out, just let me know in the comment section below. Let's go. <laughs> So, yeah, as you can see, we've got bare screens. Um, now, these screens are just cameras. You've got rear view camera, you've got a side view mirror, and you've got a side view mirror there. That's cool. Then you've got one, two screens here, and you've got one screen behind the steering wheel here. Now, this screen, obviously, it's just got, like, your miles per hour. Um, just tells you basic stuff about the car, really. Your charging time remaining. Um, it can also tell you if you've got the car set to be warmed up or cooled down overnight or at a specific time of your choosing. And um, yeah, that's basically it. It's got the standard procedural stuff. Now, onto these two big boy screens in the middle, this is where things get tricky. Now, this whole infotainment system right here actually runs on Android. It's actually mad. Um, obviously, Android's a nice open source piece of software to put your things on them things on like that but um yeah it's mad that it actually runs on android so yeah essentially you've got two screens and you can swap apps between one another so for example if i open up the phone stuff right here um i can swap it uh, with a press of a button for the passenger to do some stuff over here too um same with like if i got bluetooth audio if i swap it and there's two apps up apps will obviously just swap around of each other now as you can see i've got six apps over here and i've got six apps on the left side too now if you've watched other reviews for the honda e you'll notice that all these switches here all these buttons are different and that's just because you can literally swap them around so if i hold them um it gives me options of which ones i'd like to swap it around for um so yeah man can go and do that kind of just like android if you held the home screen for a long time you can add more shortcuts and more widgets and stuff like that so now that we know the basis of everything let's go into a few of my favorite apps that i use during every drive and show you what's really good with them now closest to the wheel uh, we've got the telephone and obviously you know how a telephone works. You've got your dialer here, you've got your contacts here as well. Um, you've got your favourite contacts and you've got your recent calls and stuff like that. We've got Bluetooth audio because sometimes I don't use the Android Auto. I just Bluetooth music directly from my phone. And with this, you know, you can change the device. You've got all different Bluetooth devices here. You can set which device you want to be your priority Bluetooth device. So for example, I've got my partner's phone connected to this car and my phone connected to this car. And obviously when we both get in the car, the car wants to know which phone it needs to connect to. So what it will now do is because I've selected my OnePlus Nord as the primary device, it will connect to that over my partner's phone, even if we're both in the car. Very self-explanatory, but I just thought I would show you guys that. And obviously you've got some other options and you can go into this and select your um, priority device and stuff like that. Uh, you've got trip computer as well. I find that quite useful. Um, just resetting the trip computer for whichever trip you're doing and seeing how far you've gotten on a specific charge. And you can set the trip counters to change or reset when you've just had a charge or when you just turn on the car or once a day, once a week, stuff like that. So um, yeah, that's really cool and you can delete the trip history if you wanted to start afresh. We've got power flow now, which just shows you, you know, if you're charging, how much time you've got left for the car to charge fully. Power flow shows you your remaining battery, your range and your remaining time. Um, if you're using something like, let's say we turn on the fan, um, it will start to show you that that's being used and that it's sucking battery out of the car as well. Obviously, but I'm charging now, so the power for the fan is not coming out of the battery of the car, it's just coming straight from the plug socket. 
So um, yeah, that's things that you can do there. And obviously every time you kind of interact with something on the dashboard or on here, um, it lets you know that that's what you've done. So I'll just put the rear windows on. If I put the front windows on as well, it should start telling me that. So yeah, it comes up with a little kind of thing there to show you that you've just initiated something. Um, it is quite cool because you get confirmation that the button that you've pressed is working, but it's quite annoying as well because as you can imagine, I usually have my sat nav here and if you come up to a roundabout and you think ah oh, let me just turn on the fan or press a button that will actually block the sat nav for a good five seconds um which could be quite crucial if you're coming up to a roundabout and you've just had a blank moment where you're thinking what the hell what turn do i take so yeah that's that's just one thing but apart from that you know yeah that's the power flow um you've got smartphone connection which as i said before is for Android Auto and uh, what's the other thing called? Um, Apple CarPlay. Now for those asking what is Android Auto and what is Apple CarPlay, it's basically a simple way to mirror your phone GPS stuff onto your car's infotainment screen. So once the phone is connected via USB to the car, um, yeah, there you go. That's Google Maps from my phone, there's CEX. Um, on Google Maps, you've got access to your Spotify as well. Let me just turn that down before I get um demonetized. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? We've got you know, phone and stuff like that, podcasts, uh, ways and YouTube music and just stuff like that, really. So, yeah, that's what Android Auto is, and Apple CarPlay is a lot similar, except for Apple CarPlay, you can use wirelessly Android. Also, you have to use whilst you're plugged in, which is okay because I guess you want your phone to be charging whilst it's beaming information over to the car. All right, last but not least on this side of the screen, we've got the EV menu, which is essentially just the power flow menu, but you've also got some settings to precondition the temperature in your car before you get in. So for example, myself, when I go squash or gym, and I come back into the car at 10 o'clock, I want the car to be nice and warm when I get back into the car. So you can obviously go into your schedule kind of thing and you can set the times and stuff like that, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, on or off, and you can set what time you want it and if you want it to repeat and just stuff like that really. So yeah, that's all nice and cool. And same with the charging. If you get a better charging rate at night time, for example, um, you can set the car to charge at night time or not to charge until 12 o'clock, rare, rare, rare. Um, and the next option is just for your charging limit settings. So let's say you're out on a motorway now and you, and you want to charge to 80%, you can just set it to 80% so that when you go into the motorway um, gas station or whatever like that, you can always look back on your phone and know how long the charging is left kind of thing. So um, yeah, pretty simple stuff there with that EV menu. Now on this side, um, it's just mess about stuff. We've got the little clock there as well. Um, so you guys can see the clock. You can actually change the background of that clock, which is kind of cool. Uh, I've got Bluetooth audio there again for some reason. I guess that's for if my passenger wants to connect their phone to the Bluetooth and they can do all that kind of stuff. Uh, got HDMI here and I've also got my Amazon Fire Stick plugged in so that does and deals with all of that and obviously I've got the little remote here so that when I want to go on some options for the Fire Stick uh, hopefully this works and doesn't embarrass me there we go okay we got all the Fire Stick stuff there la di da di da you know how a Fire Stick works let me not play anything before YouTube come for me for copyright and <laughs> we've got the aquarium um, which will eventually come up. The aquarium is just the best part of this car. It just shows how non-serious that this car is. It's not a serious workman's car. It's just for chilling. Like you're just on your gadget thing, boom. But yeah, that's the aquarium. And obviously like I've shown you before in other videos, you can choose different backgrounds and stuff, different amount of fish, save that. And then it should eventually change to the new background. So yeah guys, that's really the main apps that I use in my car, um, the quick toggles that I've set. But there's also a couple other apps that you guys might be interested in and a couple of other apps that people have asked me about. So I'm gonna show you those next. And then if there's anything else I've left out, just let me know. 
All uh, right, so let's try and do this in one take. Um, we've got this app installer. This app installer lets you install apps off a USB device. Lets you install them as APK files. I've tried to do this already, but none of the APK files that I put onto the USB would come up on the car. Next, we've got the DAB radio and the FM radios. They're just, they're just radios. You guys know how radios work. You got all that kind of stuff there. You got settings to show, yeah, blah, blah, blah. You know how radios work. There you go. I just want to show you what they look like. There you go. You can tune, you can scan station list, all that kind of stuff in there. I'll just show you the settings. There you go. Blah, blah, blah. Traffic announcement on or off. You can also set the traffic announcement as a quick toggle here to quickly turn it on or off. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> um, you've then got general settings and you've got quite a few settings in here. Um, you've got system settings and obviously, you know, date and time, language, touch panel sensitivity, developer options. Like I said, this is an Android um, thing. So obviously um, you've got all that Android stuff that you can set and change on there as well. Um, you've got wallpapers and stuff like that. Blah -de blah -de blah special app access. Yeah, lots of different settings in there. Um, if I come out of that, got your smartphone connection so that's the bluetooth and stuff display so you can change the wallpaper on the background you can see i've got this kind of cyberpunk thing going on at the moment i can change it to this kind of i don't know what is this some abandoned lodge kind of thing going on i don't know but yeah you can change it to that if you want to um also we've got options for sound so you can choose you know bass treble you got faders there um got balance fader uh, you've got speed volume compensation so the faster you go the louder it gets and you've got subwoofer volume too uh, if i come back out of this you've got cameras here as well so you know you've got multi-view camera guidelines and stuff like that you can put that kind of stuff on you can customize it as well there we go so obviously like when you go through a width restrictor it will show where's the phone? it will show this camera right here kind of thing and you can tap that to make it bigger so you can see either side of the width restrictors so yeah that's kind of cool and you can set it to automatically come up again just like the other thing um it will come up on this screen only never on that screen so sometimes you might want your gps to be on this screen so that if anything does come up on this screen it doesn't um, disturb your driving kind of thing, or it doesn't disturb your navigation. Um, and then you've got voice control stuff in there as well. It's not really all that, but um, it is there and it should, is it, it going to show me any, any stuff, anything there? No, it's not going to show me anything. Whatever, not bothered. I think I can press the voice control button, which is this thing here and it will come up with some prompts that I can press. So um, yeah, those are the prompts that you can press. Uh, you can go to some more prompts here, play this, play that. Um, yeah, so you can play that. But I can't use the Honda Assistance because that is 50 pound a month. No, sorry, 50 pound a year. I'm not paying 50 pound for something that's worse than my Google Assistant. <laughs> okay, okay. <sighs> then you've got like this Honda App Center, um, which actually doesn't have any apps in it, but it looks like it's got potential. I'm guessing that apps that are already on the Play Store can just be linked to this App Center here. And you can go, you know, through everything and see which apps are going to be compatible with your phone. But like I said, um, there's only a few apps at the moment that are even on here, the aquarium and the AHA radio thing. The aquarium's okay, the AHA radio, I don't really know about that, bro. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's literally nothing else. There was this visual playlist thing, but now it's just disappeared. So I don't really know what's going on with that at the moment. I'll just leave that there. Then you've got messages, so that are, those are just messages about the car, so if you need servicing or if there's an issue with the car um, and the car's trying to communicate that to you, you can go back here to see the message after it's already popped up. You've got your GPS navigation and stuff like that, so this is the built-in one that's already in the car, it's not as good as Google Maps. Um, 
you can change these hot soppable things down here. I guess this is for anyone that doesn't have Android Auto. Otherwise, I can't see why you would even use this anyway. It's I just don't think it's initiative at all. And it obviously doesn't update as quick as a normal Google Maps or Waze would. But yeah, that's the option if for some reason you don't have Android Auto. Um, what else have we got here? You got personal system, but I don't have that. Um, I think that's about it. Oh, and you got some more vehicle settings here as well. So yeah, you can mess with a lot of the safety stuff. So you've got the assistive cruise control vehicle ahead, detected beep. So when somebody cuts in front of you, um, it will beep to let you know that that's the situation. Even though you should be looking at the road, you should already know this, just in case your mind's elsewhere. <laughs> um, you've got the side mirror camera view stuff. I don't know if anyone knows about this and it's not really, I'm not really in a good place to show you now, but um, you can change the side view mirror from a normal mirror to a wide angle mirror. So you can see this little bollard thing behind me here in the normal mirror. And then if I go to the wide mirror, um, you can almost see the back of the car that's next to me as well. So um, yeah, that's, that's how it works. It's kind of cool. I didn't know why that option is hidden all the way in here, but that's one thing that you can do. Keyless access setup, maintenance info. And last but not least, you've got the Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, it's over there, let me just put it over here. Now, the Wi-Fi hotspot looks cool. I think it's partnered with Vodafone or something. I've tried to use it. Every time I do try and use it, it just doesn't work for me. Like, I've literally gone so hard to try and make it work, and it just doesn't. <laughs> so... I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that Honda. You're gonna to have to let me know. I've made a complaint to their like tech team and they're like, yeah, 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 just turn it on and it will work, which is clearly not the case. So I don't know for that, but yeah, that's everything else. I think I've just about gone through everything in the car in terms of the infotainment unit. Um, if there's anything else that you guys wanna know about, let me know, I guess, um, yeah. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Um, leave a comment in the comment section below. Subscribe and like. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Tech Jamo out.